Hi there. Welcome back to the Kate Daly Show. Glad you're listening today. The time is 2.38, and uh, hopefully by now you have the app. KZNU, get the app because you can listen to the show clear and concisely, and you could even, I think, pause it, and you could even listen later if you need to, whatever the case may be. But jump on there, and also you can message me right from the app. We're starting to put up podcasts, too, so that you can uh, listen to some of your favorite shows. We get a lot of requests for those. By the way, let's do a little bit of business. You know we need to. St. George Inc. and Toner Company you want to save money on your ink for your printers, now you can. With St. George Ink and Toner, visit them today at 42 South River Road next to TJ Maxx and Planet Fitness and Rowdy's Range. Rowdy's Range Shooter Supply, now a Class 3 dealer and NFA manufacturer. So if you're not a gun guy, that means Rowdy's, this is for me, <laughs> obviously they wrote this for me, that means Rowdy's now sells suppressors, <laughs> short-barreled rifles, and fully automatic weapons. That's why they did that, if you're not a gun guy. Call 275-2550. I am Kate Daly and I have uh, Randall Hinton and Thomas Dykes from Pyrolytical Radio in studio with me. Glad to have these guys. They're always fun. Glad I always have a here. fun dialogue with you guys. Um, we're talking a little bit about Common Core Sage testing and really parental rights because our parental rights in Utah are really uh, under some scrutiny right now. We're really having to fight for these. And I don't know if people are realizing that we are losing little pieces of liberty as parents. We've been noticing it in the headlines. If you haven't, you've been living in a cave. Yeah. Because medically it's been happening, and with our schools it's been happening. And, you know, they have – I've got to call her back and, and get her on the show. She was the one that uh, called up and said that they were putting that medical – that they put that medical building over by Hurricane Middle School. Yeah. And uh, we got to look into that and find out what's going on with that. That just seems <laughs> a did, little strange. Where did that funding come from? Yeah, a little yeah. strange to put a medical <laughs> facility so near school grounds that, that the school can actually authorize, you know, kids going over and, and, and having things done. I'm sure at this point there's still some parental involvement in that decision. Yet when will it become a decision where parents are left out of the loop? That's what I want right. to know. Well, they've been left out of the loop on the testing issue. Um, they have. We, we can't even see the tests. Well, we talked about opt-out issues that we've had, both of us. Um, I, I, don't, I didn't tell you, Rand. No, my daughter, she ended up taking the SAGE mm-hmm. test, so I had to request an expungement of the data, full <laughs> day's worth of data that was sent to whoever, wherever. Maybe Arnie Duncan has it. I don't know. <laughs> Secretary of <laughs> Education. But right. one, one thing we had talked about, Kate, uh, last year or last week we had talked about uh, Assistant Attorney General Chris Lacombe um, and he had interpreted the memo that came out of the Utah State Office of Education. And the initial, the last two years, the memo had said that parents can opt out of any test, uh, mm-hmm. any test administered statewide. But that's different than saying a state administered test. There's a difference because whatever Utah administers, now he's saying that you can opt your kids out of that. And in fact, in September of 2014, he reinterpreted that. I found out, though, that Assistant Attorney General Chris Lacombe is leading the lawsuit against those Libertas Institute who filed a lawsuit saying that the implementation of Common Core is illegal. What? So he's yeah. actually <laughs> fighting that lawsuit, and he's interpreting memos from the Utah State Office of Education saying what our kids can and can't do, and he's the Assistant is, Attorney General. Is this maybe a from? conflict wow. of interest? Maybe he's not getting pressure. Maybe he's just Maybe he it. is the pressure? <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, he's the arm of, long arm of the law. Yeah. But, but he's, he's representing those fighting the Common Core lawsuit. Libertas, if you don't know, Libertas Institute filed a lawsuit saying that the implementation of Common Core violated the laws as pertains to education in the state. So they right. said it was done illegally. Well, even the fact that they're using state money to implement it yeah. is illegal. That's grounds enough. I mean, the fact that they're using state funds to implement a federal program Right. I can't even imagine that that isn't even the suit that we're really going after anyway. I know that Sinue Noriega was going after that at one point. I don't know what happened to that suit. Interesting. But we're not allowed to use state money to implement a federal program. Well, here's, here's it's one. It's supposed th- to have its own funding. Exactly. Well, don't you think, Randall, and you've run for office, don't you think that sometimes legislation has certain intentions and then when it gets implemented, it goes awry? Like last oh, totally. year. Totally, totally, totally. Well, Senator Osmond sponsored the Parental Rights and Education Bill that among other things, requires a school to excuse a student from taking a test that is administered statewide. But the attorney general came in, or the assistant came in, and interpreted what the Utah State Office of Education said. That's the way the law is to be applied. So they changed the meaning there. (laughs) And he said that's not what the intention was. It was the intention, according to the senator, was I put the bill in so parents could opt their kids out of any any test, period. Right. So that got changed. 
So he was concerned. You think? As the article said. <laughs> I swear we're arguing I'm concerned. over concerned. We're arguing over semantics. We're arguing, arguing over little piddly words. And that's what's so interesting is that obviously that's what the bill states. All the parents are aware that that bill went through. And we feel safe, right? We feel like I can send my kid to school if I don't want them engaging in this testing. They already have to engage in the common core crapola that they're, that they're fed. But, hey, they don't have to engage in the testing. And now we're not even sure whether that's the case. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna waste the entire school's day or week or whatever, at least my kid can do something productive. Right. You know what they gave of, you know what they gave my kid? Eighteen pages of work to do other than Common Core. Instead of just working on his homework and actually learning something because Common Core doesn't teach anything. Uh, they don't learn regular math skills. Instead of concentrating on letting him leave uh, a room, I guess not the classroom, but a room understanding it, they just they just literally gave him a packet of 18 pages to complete that really doesn't have much to do with what he's learning, which there's, I thought was phenomenal. There's no phenomenal. coercion or, you know, yeah. hey, we're going to make yeah. your life a yeah. living hell. Yeah, it was, was, look, kid, you want your mom to, you know, if your mom takes you out of this, and, and some of the other kids are at school, or, you know, why did your mom take you out? <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I think I want to just slap them, because, and I told him, I said, you don't have to answer these kids. You don't have to say a word. You just blame it on me. Yeah, yeah my mom's my making mom me. I don't know. Crazy. I don't know. My mom's <laughs> crazy. Um, but more and more kids' parents are doing this, by the way. But yeah, they're going to go stick them in a room and tell them to do 18 pages of something else, which I think is ridiculous. Have them actually learn something. I I don't know. Here's an idea. Bring in some teachers that actually will teach regular things like regular math. And we won't say a word about it. I'll totally consent to it. I'll, you drop a form, I'll sign it. Send my kid into a room with a math teacher that can actually teach math in a regular way so that he can leave the room understanding and comprehending it. I won't say a word. I'll be totally happy. And you, you know, you guys won't get your test scores from him. You won't get your, your money, but that, guess that's what? That's it. That's it. Funding. Funding and accreditation. Funding, right. accredi accreditation, and merit pay. And I'll walk out at least knowing that I sent my, my kid to school school for a good reason that day then we're all happy there hey. you go i no i don't know i think common core puts the fun and funding but <laughs> <Ba -dum -bum. laughs> sorry th these are bad jokes you know what bad i actually know pun. no you know what i have <laughs> oh sorry that's not the right one anyway i thought i had a rim well, shot on i it. think and kate you're a perfect example and i was yeah. too the attorney assistant wow, attorney perfection. general didn't just say okay you have to take all the tests or you can opt out of all of them right he said okay the state administered ones like mm -hmm. the a AUU or something, or the UAA and the access, yeah. kids can't opt out of that and some other tests, but they can't opt out of the federal, which is SAGE, Dibles, and all this. And I'm like, how as a, as a parent am I supposed to keep track of this? And how yeah. are the teachers going to keep track? You know what? You're supposed to give up and just let them take the test so they get their funding and they get their accreditation. Yeah, will you just, will you just stop so yeah. we can get what we want? Because Would you just have standard kids, please? We, we yeah. just not love your children enough to worry They are about making this? it so frustrating that I've often felt like, well, give in. Because you know what? It doesn't matter how hard you fight. <laughs> My kid has got to be the ostracized kid that doesn't take the test, right? And so what does that do to him? And they put parents in a pretty awkward position. They put the kids in an awkward position. And by, by hauling these kids off to another room and making them do all this huge packet of work as what? A punishment? <laughs> Shame on you, school district. Shame on you for doing that. That's ridiculous. They, they shouldn't just, be doing that. Well, why don't they just give the kids the choice? And whoever wants to take it can. And I, you would see none of the kids take the test. I, oh, yeah. I stopped a high school teacher and I, I asked this teacher. I won't even say whether it's a he or she. I asked this teacher. I said, <laughs> yeah. you can't be for this thing. You, I, I don't believe it because I know you. And this person said, are you kidding me? We all hate it. We can't say anything. We'll lose our jobs. I need my job. And she said, you know what? I basically will say, I'll do what I need to in class, you know? And then I'll say he. He um, said, I will do what I need to in class to get what I need done. But it's really frustrating for the teachers. We hate it. We can't speak out on it. We can't let the parents know about it. We can't even see the tests that they're taking. We don't know why they're taking these tests. I don't agree with it. But what are we going to do? Well, I thought it was hard for it's teachers to problem. get fired because that's what you always hear. Yeah. They have tenure or whatever, and they, they, we can't get rid of them. They put them in a rubber room. Not but anymore. is that just if they speak out against the system itself? Yeah. Well, it's, it's can I, can I share a little story? Yeah. Sure. My, my dad, he's retired now, but he was an educator. He taught mm -hmm. third grade over in Hurricane for a lot of years. <clears throat> and uh, he had this vocabulary program, which... You know, the kids loved and they were learning tons of words, which any current 
vocabulary program would right. say third grade kids can't learn. Um, anyway, but and so their test scores at the end of the year were awesome. Mm-hmm. And but he, you know, they didn't do like Common Core testing all right. the way through, but just so he was teaching them this vocabulary um, program, and uh, somebody came along and they said, "Hey, we want we want to get this new." new funding for this new vocabulary program. It's going to be awesome. And my dad said, no, we don't want that because you don't get any money from the federal government without strings attached. And we like having no control. Strings. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and, you know, there was a lot of people wanted it because it looked like it was going to be good funding and, and whatever. <sighs> and, and they promised, they said, no, there are no strings attached. We just do what we want with the money. You know, we implement it's this program. It's never that way. When that, are we going to get that? Yeah. So, so they, they brought on the program and they had all sorts of testing requirements and and the specific program that you had to do with really dumbed down you know third grade words and and it was just awful and and that's what my dad brought up to him said hey you know i thought you said there were no strings attached He's like what are you talking about there's always strings attached with money from the federal government now it comes out because this individual was creating a position for herself that was paid for by this program so we're going to get the program, create the position. You have we're to change stay in, it, right? To and, make it look like you've got new input on it, right? So they changed it so that that input, that federal input is there. That stamp of federal right, intervention right. is there. So we can keep the position. And, and anyway, it just, I, I remember seeing my dad go through these couple of years because they were the last couple of years before he finally retired. Hmm. But it was just, it was just awful. You know, he, he was under so much additional stress to try and, and teach these kids. The first year, he he just taught his own program. Still, right. And then his I kids his kids scored great at the end of the year. You know, oh, higher than all the other. The program took credit for it. Well, no, no, program? no, no. He got in trouble <laughs> because his kids were not performing at they were baseline. They the rest weren't of the kids. lower, and he got in trouble because they right. didn't perform lower. So, at a so lower then, level. so then, because he got in trouble, he said, "Okay, fine, I'll do it. I'll do the program," and. um and he started following all the guidelines. But then um, they came in and asked in the middle of the year how things were going. And all the other teachers were like, oh, it's just, you know, it's so difficult. There's all these different criteria. It's just not going well. I don't understand it. And they were like, oh, that's fine. That's fine. You know, whatever. Just we'll get along through it. And then my dad was like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And the kids, they, they're liking this part and this part and they're doing well. And he got just ripped a new one because I think it was just because she didn't like him at that point in time. But it's like, it's, it's, it's this whole thing in government, right? We get money so we can make things better for the kids, but it's all about, it's all about the adults. Funding in education is not about children. It's about jobs for adults. Legislation isn't about legislation. It's about the politician's career. That's right. That's Absolutely. right. And, and if you can, if you can look beyond <laughs> yeah. what it looks on the surface, then you can start to see that and say, wait a second. You know, I don't want this bill. It's not based on principle. I don't care if it's going to help, you know, ex-politician stay right. in office or ex-administrator keep his job. Right. That's not why we're doing it. If we're doing it for the kids, then let's do it for the kids. Really. I agree. Case in point, assistant superintendent selling our kids' information last year to the state of Florida without telling anybody. Men love the superintendent of Utah. Goes and does this sort of little slap on the wrist in the media. Oh, she didn't mean to do that. Boy, she'll never she do that again. She didn't mean to do that. Yeah, what kind of effort takes, <laughs> she'll, does she'll it take to do, do that? that again. But guess what, folks? We got $5 million, but we know that she should have asked permission. We didn't know she was selling our kids' information on testing information to Florida you know, because, we don't, because we don't I, want to know why. See, she's, she's the like, assistant superintendent, so obviously exactly. she wouldn't know what exactly. she was doing. But what did that do for her career? Because I'll tell you what, folks, she's still in. She, yeah. didn't, she didn't get removed from her uh, position. She scored the state $5 million. You really think they're going to get rid of her? Well, yeah. and, and think about when you, when you have a fundamental model that's different than the profit model, that's the use it or lose it model. When you expand education and you hire more teachers and more assistants and more bureaucrats, mm-hmm. more st- administrators then your motive every year is to keep everybody and to keep that money, keep that keep it going. Couldn't say it better or you'll myself. Lose it. Couldn't say it better myself. You're listening to Fox News, the Kate Daly Show. We'll be right back. Anyway, yeah. Um, hey, I have a really good quote by a teacher. Yeah, we don't care. <laughs> you couldn't say it better. You couldn't say it better. I, I had one point I wanted to jump in on, and now I can't even remember. Keep it, it to yourself. Awesome. I'm just teasing. You sound like you sound like a teacher now. I do. You know, I always wanted to be a teacher. 
I really did. You, you've done good. You've I done love good. teaching. You're, you're teaching every day. That, there you go, right? In my weird it, way. You're, you're teaching, teaching parents. You don't have a teaching certificate, but that's okay. That's okay. I do enough schoolwork. I do. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, you're in school. Day. Holy crap, I study so much. It's, I don't even... Seriously, I had to do all that state paperwork last night. I had all I had a whole lineup of stuff I had to do. Finally, about eleven o'clock, I crawl into bed and I'm reading, reading, reading until I don't know two, one thirty, two. Yeah. Anyway, and then up at six thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy life. You're wild and crazy. Oh, um, yes. I'm gonna skip Kate Daly School of Politics. <laughs> <laughs> You know it. You can arm wrestle Kurt and Jowers. They're at the Hinkley Institute. There you go. Take that. Uh, Take that. And I, I'm really not trying to, I, you know, when I play all this stuff like I did the first hour, I'm really not trying to tell people that I'm trying to say, you know, don't be a Republican and don't be a party player. But you have to look at the parties and understand them. It's yeah. like you can't, oh. we join for social reasons. Saying. We join for social. We do, Are they for abortion or against abortion? We didn't. Oh, in. We didn't. Yeah. When the, we became a state, they yeah. went down the, down and knocked on every door. The north side of the street was Democrat, and the south side of the street was Republican, or, or every other house. It wasn't for social reasons. It was we had to have separate parties, so because yeah. they were worried we'd all vote as one. There you and, go. And so now we have. I'm a Democrat. My dad's been a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, but that's because somebody knocked. We're going to talk about that in the third hour, by the way. Okay. Because <laughs> it's crazy, is what it is. <laughs> okay. We only have like oh a minute. Okay. Are we recording? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some of the best stuff's off the air. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, off the cuff. It is. It's off the air. This is you guys. Okay. It's not me. It's you guys. <laughs> Hi there, welcome back to the show, the Kate Daly Show. I'm Kate Daly, glad to have you aboard. We also have Randall Hinton and Thomas Dykes, of course. Uh, it's Tuesday, of course. And they are from Pyrolytical Radio, so happy to have them in studio. And I hope you have the app, KZNU, get the app, because then you can listen in your car, uninterrupted, clear and concise, and it's awesome. All right, so we have a few seconds here before we go off the air, and uh, yeah, Randall. Well, you know, you made the comment there right right towards the end of the last section. Mm -hmm. Um about how the assistant superintendent sold all this, yeah, five all this information, dollars. and they got slapped on the wrist, and they're still in there. And I thought, ironically, just you know, in public mm -hmm. office in general, you just talked about the Iran Contra scandal yeah. and George Bush in the last mm -hmm. previous hour, and where he eventually he got to to the convention, he's like, nobody cares. It's okay. It doesn't matter what I do. And, right and that's, on. but Bingo. that is exactly Bingo. what just happened. Yep. Public officials know that if they can just ride out the wave mm -hmm. long enough, it'll eventually dump them and get someone else, pick someone else up, and they're the big problem. It's our ADD nation. Right. We don't care. We'll five forget. Minutes. I didn't You'll forget know. about this show by tomorrow. I didn't know there was this <laughs> button. I hit it, and all their data went out. I'm really sorry. We'll be back. You're listening to Fox News, the Kate Daly Show. I just like I. I'm glad I just remembered that because I was like, oh, that's right, that's what she said that, and I was like, George Bush. And that was such a good bookend, Randall. That <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Hashtag. Uh, I bet you guys don't have an energy drink that's five days old, do you? I know you're no. coveting. Hmm. Mm. I, I, I've never had a Drinking rock Drinking in that goodness. Ooh, that warm, goodness. orange goodness. I love it. Mm, anyway. Syrupy. I went to the uh, media luncheon, if anybody would like a chocolate. Yes. Patsy is Therapy. so amazing. She does these really cute packages for everybody, and they're so cute. Anyway. Hazelnut? Yeah, I was just eyeing that one. What? Too. You guys are freaks. There you go. Freaks, I tell you. All right. What do we got? No, we're not. We're in the... It's bits. huge. It's like... Lunatic oh, really? It looks yeah. like it was, like, rewrapped. <laughs> I licked it. <laughs> I put it back for you. I, don't, I, don't I hope you don't one. mind. Mm. I don't like this mm, one. Yummy. I love rewrapped chocolate. Yummy. Well, Ooh, why that. wouldn't you? Where's the wah tears? You know what we're doing on Valentine's Day? I love you. Actually, I love your microbiome. <laughs> don't ask. It's on Valentine's Day. Just tune in. Anyway. Um, I love your microbiome. Yeah, I know. Don't be jealous. Okay, so three stories at three. Come on. Okay, we got 25 million shipment of U.S. artillery arrives in Lebanon. 
don't be mm. scared. And then we have how vaccine hysteria could uh, hysteria could spark total terri to total oh my gosh totalitarian. Totalitarian? Totalitarian. <laughs> the freak, man. My brain is mush. Nightmare. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to go with that one. Find me a story, Randall. I need a three on three. Three on three? Yeah, and then I've got...